What's up, guys? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Joannis or Joe Hatagua. I'm a Sierra Leonean American living in Ghana. I'm in Los Angeles right now. And if you want to know about Beyond the Return activities happening in Ghana December of this year, then this is the video for you. All right, all right, all right. So we are live on Instagram. We're live on YouTube. We're live on Facebook. Uh, sorry, we're live on LinkedIn. LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. And for those of you who are joining on Instagram, all you need to do is click on the pinned link and it will take you to the live so you can see our guest. So we do have a special guest today. We're going to talk to her about uh, the Beyond the Return activities and, and what's happening at the end of this year. So if you want to see our guest, join the YouTube live. Um, in the meantime, I think I'll do a little bit of housekeeping for those of you who are not familiar with me. Actually, first, I was going to ask if you can hear me, but Manalik just let me know. You can hear me loud and clear on YouTube. Um, can you guys let me know on Instagram if you can hear me loud and clear? I would like to know if you can hear me. Um, and while we wait for you guys to get back to me, just let me know if you guys can hear me. Um, this week is going to be a pretty uh, packed week of content. I have uh, YouTube shorts going up every day this week. And so there'll be clips from um, other parts of videos that are already live. So you guys can check those out. Uh, I'm also going to be posting um, some content from my trip to LA. Uh, with uh, I went to Legoland with my nephews. If you guys are interested in seeing that, I have all of that there. And you guys will get a chance to see that. And then I also have another interview with someone, and I'm not going to say who it is yet, but an interview with someone who moved to Ghana and uh, moved their family to Ghana. And um, I think it'll be really interesting. We had them on a live recently. And so um, I told you guys, if you guys want to hear their story, we'll have that on a separate video. And so we'll make sure that that's, um, that's up this week. So on Wednesday, you guys will get the interview. Uh, sorry, on Wednesday, you'll get the Legoland trip, the vlog from that with my sister and her kids. And then on Saturday you guys are gonna get a chance to see uh, the interview that I did with um, with uh, the person that I mentioned that uh, you guys will see when that video comes out. Okay, cool. Um, Dan Diablo, Disco Dan is in the building. What's up, Disco Dan? And Brown Coat Blue is here, cool, cool. So you guys can hear me. King Joseph joined on LinkedIn, I mean on Instagram. So um, you can definitely jump over to the YouTube live if you wanna see our guest. All right, cool, so we're gonna go over um, uh, everything pertaining to Beyond the Return this year. Um, I do want to intro our guest. I'm going to bring her on before I do the intro. Um, or should I do the intro and bring her on? I don't know how these things go, but let's all right, let's do, let's start with the intro and then I'll bring her on. How about that? All right. So, um, so today we're talking to Ivory Prosper um, about the year of return. She's a TEDx speaker, TV host and reporter, content creator, social media manager for Year of Return and Beyond the Return, at the Ghana Tourism Authority and so much more. What else more? Let's talk about it. So one, she's an award-winning YouTube creator. Um, she's recently become a part of the LinkedIn creator community or creator program. Um, she's the author of the book, Your Essential Guide to on Moving to Ghana, um, which is actually available on Amazon. I have a link in the description. If you guys want to read that book, you can get it there. And um, she will also be speaking at the YouTube Creators Festival in Ghana at the end of November. So with that, let me bring on Ivy. Hey, Ivy. Hi, how are you? Good, good, how are you? Fantastic, thanks for having me on today. Thanks for doing this, I appreciate it. Um, Ivy has interviewed me, I've interviewed Ivy. We've had um, maybe four pieces of content on the channel now. She was my very first live ever I did yeah. on this channel. Yeah. Um, if you if you go back and watch that live, Ivy's like, there's some comments. Put the comments on the screen. I went back, I went back and watched it. I was like, oh, how do you do that? How do you put the comments on the screen like this right here? Bronco Blue says the audio is good. So yeah. So um, I really do appreciate you, Ivy, for for taking the time to do this because I I think people are really interested in what's happening at the end of the year, dirty December or year of return, beyond the return activities, um, and who better to ask about that than you, of course. Thank um, you. Absolutely. So with that, um, I'm going to just jump into some questions here. And then, you know, obviously, as as the the group who's watching, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments. Um, and then if you're just a reminder for those of you who are watching on Instagram live, 
there's a pinned link to the YouTube live. So click that link if you want to see our guest. Otherwise, you're just going to have audio in the background and you're just going to see me. So you'll see me talking and then you'll hear the audio. But if you want to see our guest, Ivy, jump on the YouTube live. All right, cool. So, um, so Ivy, we met, um, when did we meet? Maybe was May of 2021, I think it was. Was it? Um, I guess it was that around that time, May or June of 2021. Um, and I guess you had you had seen the interview I did with, um, who was the interview with? I saw you before I saw the interview. You oh, did, okay. You, you did an interview with Vanessa Camby, but I had seen your content before. The content that I um, saw was one that you did with your friend. There was a guy, I can't remember Elf. his name. Yeah, I saw that first, before I saw the one with you and Vanessa. Got it. So that was the 10 things I wish I knew before coming. That's to it. That was it. Yes. Yeah. That video on his channel has almost a hundred thousand views. So, wow. um, which is great. Big audience. So he does. My, my video has like 13,000 views. So That's if you guys want to watch it, watch it on my channel, not on his. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, no, that I, I do remember that now. Yes. And so uh, we met and um, as we were talking, I realized I should be interviewing you um, because you had the book. And because of what you've been doing for Beyond the Return and because of what you had done on social media, that was why I was so excited about going to the year of return. And I had been following it afterwards. And it was you who were who was the one in charge of doing all the posting there. So um, and I'm glad that we're, we're able to come full circle. Yeah. Um, and we're back with the year of Beyond the Return activities happening again this year. And uh, we can talk to you about them. So um I guess before we get into that, I do want to ask what your channel is about. For those of you who are not familiar with Ivy, we can ask, we can start with that. Like, what, what is your YouTube channel about? And then can we talk a little bit about the LinkedIn creator program that you're doing? Because I saw that post on LinkedIn and um, I see that you're being um, consistent there. So I'm interested to hear like what, what brought it about and um, a little bit more about it for sure. Um, okay, so uh, for those who don't know, my name is Ivy Prosper, and I have a YouTube channel where I share stories on Africa and the African diaspora. Primarily, my stories are in Ghana, since I am based in Ghana. At the moment, I'm not there. At the moment, I'm in Canada until um, for the next few weeks, I'll be back in Ghana. And with the LinkedIn Creator Program, that is something that they're trying to boost the interest of um, creators in general on LinkedIn. The space for LinkedIn originally started off as a place where people went and put their CVs, their resumes up to look for work. Now, because of the creator um, mindset that we have around the world now, people want to see content. They're focusing more on using people's um, skill set, people who are skilled in creating content to be part of their creator program. So I have a newsletter that I put out every week. Um, it's called Live Life Prosper, and it's all about sharing my experiences that help to teach other people, um, you know, to live life and to prosper. So, uh, so yeah, so I got into that. Um, somebody um, by the name of um, Terry Kojo Pong, he um, is Ghanaian who's working with LinkedIn and he's really trying to beef up them, including African creators, because their focus was mostly on Canadian and American creators, mostly from the U.S. actually, but he uh, is really trying to push them, adding more African creators. So I got to be one of the people added to the program, which has been great. Nice. Um, I just want to shout out Bob. Bobby Wright says, Ms. Prosper has a great YouTube platform I've followed for several years. Thank Do you want to you. mention that YouTube too? So you've been on YouTube for quite a while, right? I remember we talked about this when we first met. Yeah, I have. And the thing is, when I started it, originally when I started, it wasn't to become a creator and to be making content to, um, you know, promote anything to the world. Because when YouTube started mm -hmm. back in, I believe YouTube started 2005, 2005, 2006, around okay, that time. Yeah. And at that time, it was like a brand new platform. People were just uploading videos and it was just such random stuff. And I was actually using it originally to post videos for me to apply for jobs. So like when I'm applying for jobs in the TV industry, I posted video clips that were my demo reel, 
so that people can see what I can do. And most of those, a lot of them were unlisted links. I didn't make them public links because it would be, I would send in my resume and then send in a link so that the person hiring could see what I could do on camera, whether it was in front of the camera, producing or editing, they could see what I could do. So that was how I started it. And it was in 2011 when I actually started to post about Ghana, when I started to post about Ghana, but it wasn't even then, it wasn't consistent. It was mainly posting because my friends in, in Canada and the States wanted to see what it was like. So I would just post random things every so often. And then it was in 2018 when I really was like, okay, you know what? I think this could be something more of interest. So I started to do more videos then. And then 2019 is when I really was like, boom, boom, boom. I got to um, really try to see what this is all about. I think it was um, after uh, seeing that people really were interested in Africa, you know, that made me continue doing it. And I've continued to this day. Nice, nice. And I noticed that um, a lot of the viral moments of uh, Black American celebrities in Ghana, Ivy was right there as it was happening. So all these things that we were seeing, like Steve Harvey going um, and um, what's her name now? I'm, I'm forgetting her name. She um, she used to do a lot of CNN appearances. Um, Angela Rye, yes. all these people who've gone to Ghana, right? Ivy was always right there. So I think it's really cool. She's, she's a cool job and allows her to be um, in these places with all of these folks and documenting their experience. So yeah, I think yeah. Cool. Yeah. Fun fact, the the um the Steve Harvey video that went viral, it was like a two minute clip when he went to the W.E.B. Du Bois Center. I'm the mm -hmm. one that filmed that video. I filmed that video. And for those who are interested in doing content, one of the excuses that people often make is they don't have they don't have the latest equipment. They don't have, you know, something they, they're like, I need this. I need that. When you can start with your phone, literally that day at the office i had come from the airport and filming some other stuff that we had going on this was during the year of return got to the office and then i got i went to sit down i was going to charge my phone and i was told you need to go and see steve harvey he's at the web du bois center you got to be there in less than 20 minutes and literally i went there with my phone and i filmed that clip on my phone and then when i posted it onto the year of return page that video went viral People downloaded it and put their own watermark on it. People acted like it was their video. I saw so many platforms downloading the video that I filmed and putting their logo on it. And mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the blogs in Ghana and media in Ghana just reusing that clip that I filmed that went viral. And that video catapulted the beginning of so much content on the year of return, just going and going and going and going. Fun fact and yeah. great memory. Uh yeah, and I actually didn't know that that was your your clip, but it makes so much sense. That was my clip. It makes so much sense now because I, you know, when you go to the year of return, the well, the beyond the return site, and you see the the pictures there, and um, and I remember seeing those clips and like they were shared everywhere. I everywhere, everywhere. It on, on that Twitter was me filmed on my phone. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, and and, for, so and I see a comment there saying iPhones or iPads are great for shooting. It was a Samsung S8 mm. that I filmed that clip on. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> and also Shay TBD says, Ivy Prosper is the best international Ghanaian YouTuber. Thank you. There you go. There you go. Um, so a couple people were saying hi. Um, iTuber says, what up, though? Are you from Detroit? Because what up, though, sounds like a Detroit. That's how Detroit people talk. It's been a minute. What's up? Um, and Fred says, hello. Um, and Kwame says, authentic African and Ivy Prosper and everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, All hello. right, cool. Um, all right, cool. So uh, what Amanda Lick said, I really look up to you both, love your content, and hope to be like you when I grow up. Well, thanks, Amanda Lick, of course. Thank you. You can be like you. There you go. You can be like you, Amanda Lick. You can be like you and do and it even it better. all it takes is consistency. That's it. And, and the more you do it, the easier it gets. I I told you guys the first time I did my live, obviously I was really nervous, didn't know what to do. Ivy was uh, gracious enough to join me for that live. Um, I had no idea what I was doing, but that live has like 4,000 views. It's one of my highly viewed, my most viewed lives. And I had no idea what I was doing. I was like, 
I was just like, okay, I'm going to use StreamYard. I think Ivy, you did it. We I did told a, you to um, use StreamYard, yes. Yeah, you told me to use StreamYard. We did like a tutorial like 15 minutes before. Yeah. And then we went live and that was it. So uh, guys, definitely, if you're into, if you want to create content, just do it. There's no yeah. better time than the present too. Um, okay, on that note. Um, okay, there's a couple people just singing your praises. Catherine Thank Smith you. says, love Ivy Prosper's channel. Very professional and interesting. Um, yes. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so I know you do some writing as well um, because we've done a couple interviews. I know that one didn't um, actually come out, but you write yeah. for, you do some freelance writing as well too, right? I do some writing. I have some, uh, I'll call it some ghost writing. There's some okay. stuff that I've done that I don't really talk about, but I have written speeches and I have written some brochures uh, for some high profile situations. Sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have written speeches for people at top level that people wouldn't even realize I'm the one that wrote the speech. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah. Um, I do do some writing and, um, and other things, other consulting and stuff that I do as well. Yeah. So quick question before we move on. Um, why, I think you say Bois, Buana, Buana. Um, are you guys both in Ghana right now? Uh, do you want to answer your, your answer well, first? For me, I am currently in Canada. Um, I had put up a video on my page recently talking about that. I had some health challenges that I was uh, managing. I am in Canada. I will be back in Ghana very soon. Um, next month, actually, November, I'll be back in, in Ghana, back in the thick of things. I, I miss, I really miss Ghana, like really miss Ghana, oh, you know? And um, I can't wait to get back into the thick of things, yeah. Nice. Um, and I am in Los Angeles. So King Joseph just said, good evening. I'm watching from Los Angeles. I'm up in the house. What's up, King Joseph? Yeah, I'm in L.A. as well. So um, I, don't, I don't know if you guys remember last week on the live, I had to catch myself because I was starting to say I'm going to be in L.A. this coming week. And I forgot that I was surprising my nephew for his 16th birthday. <laughs> and I'm just talking like, yeah, I'm going to be in L.A. And I'm like, Luckily, he didn't watch the live because he had exams last week and he was focused on studying. So <laughs> nice job, Jaden. That's um, funny. <laughs> but yeah, I, I caught myself and I was like, and I was like, I'm going to tell you why I caught myself mid-sentence next week. So that was what it was. So I surprised him on Friday. I landed um, and went straight <laughs> to his birthday party. I was a little late, but I caught him. You guys will get to see all of that. That's going to be in a vlog that comes out in the next couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was a great experience catching up with him for his 16th birthday. I cannot 16 believe is it. big. It is big. And it also reminds me how old I am because he was born the year I graduated from college. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so yeah, that was a reminder. I was like, oh, okay. Cause he was, he was like, yeah, the, the one and only time I was in New York was when I was a baby for your college graduation. I was like, oh yeah, right. And you're 16. <laughs> and you're 16. So, uh, but it was cool. It was great. Meeting his friends. He has like a really cool entrepreneurial friend. He had a really good time. Anyway, that'll be a vlog for a later time. Okay. So, um, I, I wanted to ask you this. I don't know if I've ever asked you this, but how did you get involved with the Tourism Authority and um, the Beyond the Re well, the Year of Return and Beyond the Return activities? Okay, so this is a testament to why people should just tell their stories, why people should just post, why they should just do it. So I was already, as I said, posting about Ghana. I was already telling stories on my personal social media pages. Um, I published my first book about Ghana in 2018. So Your Essential Guide and Moving to Ghana, the first edition was published in 2018. The second edition was in 2019. So the first edition I had published before I started working at, at Year of Return. Um, so they had already been seeing what I've been doing online. And um, someone that I knew there had recommended that, you know, they give me an interview, try to give me an interview because they were looking for somebody to help manage their social media because they really didn't have anyone managing it. It was um, somebody in the marketing department who was doing it um, on top of other things he was already doing. So there really wasn't focus on it. It was like an afterthought. I, when I went and analyzed their page, there was like, you would see a post and you wouldn't see another post for two weeks. 
Um, there wouldn't be another post again on their Instagram for like maybe, you know, three weeks. And so it wasn't consistent. So it wasn't garnering the traction that it needed. So I got an interview based on people seeing what work I had been doing already on my own. And then I went in the interview and, and I ended up getting the job. So basically whenever you're posting on your own pages, it's all about what you're already doing to be able to show that you have the capacity to do something. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. So that's how I, that's it. That's the simple story. Nice. Okay. And so, um, so every, everything you guys have seen that's been reshared and reposted has come from the work of what Ivy has been doing. Um, <clears throat> okay. I see so a comment here. Yes. The, the, can I, can I address it? Is it a Dan Diablo about starting YouTube? Vanessa yes. Can be mentioned Dan, yeah. Dan Diablo. He's all, he's all, he always has interesting questions. So, yeah, okay. Was, so yeah. Dan Diablo says, Ivy, you started taking YouTube serious around the same time as Vanessa can be. How come your subscribership have not mirrored hers and others? So I have been working at the same time as doing YouTube. So even when I, um, so I was, when I started doing YouTube 2018, when I started taking it a little bit more serious, I was working as a documentary film producer. So I work for a documentary film company and as a producer producing projects, um, that was my first thing I was doing. And then my personal stuff was the afterthought. And then after that, taking on my job at U I, um, Year of Return, Ghana Tourism, my job full time, and then trying to do YouTube on the side. Vanessa has been doing YouTube a hundred percent. She doesn't have another job. All she does is YouTube. That is her job is YouTube morning to night. That's what she does. So she, she would come to Ghana before she moved to Ghana, she would come to Ghana and she would spend like, you know, one or two weeks. And all she would do is film from morning to 7am to like seven at night, whatever she would be filming, filming, filming back to back. Then she would go back to Scotland and she'd be editing and just editing and editing and editing. So she was just, that was her full, that's her full time. Um, I'm balancing working with doing it at the same time. So I think that growth can happen easier when you're not trying to balance two things. Uh, I'm not saying it's impossible because, um, you know, there are people who have the capacity to be able to do that at the same time, but it is difficult managing. And I know that uh, Joe can speak to it because he also works mm -hmm. full time while also trying to grow his YouTube channel. And it's exhausting because you're like one human being trying to do, you know, multiple things and it can get really exhausting. So that's the main thing is when it comes to YouTube, if you can dedicate hundred percent, then you can just, you know, fly just like this. What, what am I? Like, that's all he was doing. Once he left his job, he told me once he left his job and he was able to focus on YouTube, that's when the exponential growth happens. 100%. I can just say I'm nodding my head all along because I know the struggle, um, especially working in Ghana. I don't think people understand <laughs> how much time and energy goes into working full time in Ghana. I've experienced that for a full year. I, yeah. I and you know, and and when I met Vanessa Kambi, by the way, she did mention that she was doing three videos a week throughout that time, right? And so that was what led to her exponential growth. Prior to that, she hadn't been doing that many videos a week, and because she was doing it full time, she could dedicate all those hours to editing and posting. Yeah. Um, I try to do three videos a week and I have no life, right? Zero personal life. Okay. Yeah. So it is very, very difficult to, to be able to post that consistently. Um, but anyway, that, that was a little bit off topic, but I did, I did just want to add my two cents there because it is much harder than you might think. I know people um, don't realize how hard it is. Yeah. I mean, just start a YouTube channel and you know, <laughs> that's yeah. it. I mean, yeah. when you start a YouTube channel, um, but it's important to know that because I do believe that if you want to, you should. But I also want to make sure that people understand how much work goes into it. It is another full-time job. You're working Completely. two full-time jobs. So yeah. just keep that in mind, guys. Um, okay. There's a couple different things that people are saying before we move on to my next question for you, Ivy. Um, Buana says, Authentic African, you do a great job at interviewing. This is your lane, brother. And Ivy has been doing great work. Well, thank, thank you. you. And, of course, Ivy has been doing great work, obviously. Um then um, Krista Bella says, I enjoyed Ivy's interview with Jules. Thank you. It was uh, Jules. So Jules, uh, Jules has a company, AIM, um, okay. which is Africa and Me. Um, okay. He has cl a clothing line that is all about promoting Africa to the world. 
uh, he has a store in Toronto. And so I went to his store and we did an interview in the shop and he told his little history about his involvement in Ghana and being on the radio and up until now what he's doing. He's doing great things. I thought the video would get more views, but it's like, I'm so surprised that because I love his story, but I'm so surprised that it didn't get as much traction as I hoped. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, and that's awesome that that's what they're doing. And you, that just shows how much I listen to rap music because I see Jules spelled like that. And I think of Joel Santana from Dipset. Ah. For those of you who listen to <laughs> rap music from the early 2000s, that's, that's what I'm thinking when I see that name. Okay, but Jules, got it. Um, all right, really quickly, let's run through some of these before I can actually ask you some questions. I don't want them to be too far gone by the time we get there. Um, content creation is a lot of work, takes a lot of time. You're right. ITuber says, blame the algorithm. Who knows? I think we already answered why it was the way it is. King Joseph, I'm, I'm I think, presently working to improve my YouTube channel. Um, yeah, just be consistent. The more consistent you are, the better you get, right? Is And you, you obviously want to learn from other people, right? Don't just be mindlessly posting, but learn to see what what uh, titles are getting, you know, because you can look at your, your um, I know this is not a YouTube tutorial, um, but since a couple of you are content <laughs> creators, you can look at your analytics and you can see what your click-through rate is, CTR, click-through rate. And so that's going to be based on your thumbnail and your title, right? Yeah. And that shows how many people who it shows up in their feed who actually decide to click on it. You should optimize based on that. You see that something's working, do it based on that. Um, and then there are other ways that you can see what works, right? I'm starting to learn that if I do a why I moved from X to Ghana, that is where I see the most um, engagement. So now- Yeah, people are interested in that. Yeah, people are really interested in that. And that's that's why I'm doing a lot more interviews and you'll see many more interviews on my channel over the next weeks. Um, that's actually gonna be exclusively one day a week is gonna be about uh, in, uh, interviews with people because that is really awesome. what, um, that's how people are engaged with my channel. And then of course, if I do Nigeria content, which you guys, some of you who know, you know, I got ripped to shreds about a piece of content I did about my trip to Nigeria. That's a conversation for another time. But oh, yeah, so, yeah, we'll talk about it later. Ivy was crazy. <laughs> uh, um, okay, so uh, Fred says Ivy is a superstar. Thank you, Fred, for all your support. I appreciate you. Um, okay, let's see. iTuber says update that faster citizenship process law in Ghana. Um, I have no updates on it. All? I have no, no updates on it. That is that is the um, uh. Oh, what's it called again? I'm drawing a complete blank now. Um, but it's an act that they're trying to put through to help people from a diaspora get citizenship faster. Um, it's been in parliament for a long time. It's been locked in parliament for a while. So I don't have any updates on it, unfortunately. And this is, you know, you can tell iTuber is a, is a great subscriber because this actually came from the last conversation that Ivy and I had because we talked about this a little bit about some of the people who came for the year for year of return and got their citizenship. And we talked about that there was this, this, um, I guess it was soon to be law. Hopefully one day it'll be law. Um, yeah. and it was, it was about ex making it more expedient. Um, okay, cool. All right. Let's get back into some of my other questions. Okay. Um, so, so we, okay. So we talked about how you got involved with the year of return. I do want to ask this because I, I think it's really important when people think of beyond the return and the year of return, all they think about is like Afro Nation and Afro Cella. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was important to bring you on because when we first talked, you talked about the tenets of um, the Beyond the Return and I had no idea about it. And I think it's important for the group here to hear about it. So can you talk through, is it the, the core tenets of Beyond the Return so people understand what is all involved and it's not just Afro Nation and Afro Cella, but there's so much more to it? Mm -hmm. So um, Beyond the Return is basically the follow-up to Year of Return. And the theme for, so first of all, I'll start with Year of Return because there could be people who've joined this live and maybe it's their first time watching and maybe they don't know exactly what it is because there's a lot of people who really didn't know. They just right. thought it was parties all the time. So uh, Year of Return basically was commemorating the 400 year anniversary of the first documented ship of enslaved Africans that arrived in the United States in Virginia and um, in commemorating that when Ghana commemorated that and welcomed the diaspora community to come and visit Ghana. Part of the visiting, they created the calendar of events for the purpose of when people come, they have something to do. So basically it's like you have, you're coming for historical reasons, you're gonna visit some sites, and then also to have some things that you can do to enjoy while you're here on the trip, while you're in Ghana on your trip. 
And so that calendar of events was created. And then um, it just really took off. And so for December, we launched December in GH because already Ghanaians come to Ghanaians come to Ghana every December historically to visit friends and family, those who live abroad. But the added element of the diaspora coming, um, you know, pushed the idea of launching the December calendar of events. So there are events that happen the whole entire year. But December has a lot more events because more people are coming to town. And then we have an official calendar that we release for the public so people know what's going on when they come and plan their trips. So beyond the return is, so somebody's asking, will there be another year of return? Year of return was 2019. So what I was explaining is it commemorated the year 1619. So 2019 was a 400 year anniversary. There is not another 400 year anniversary again. So there is not another year of return. The, the year of return was in 2019, but we still um, we still work on the social media pages because a lot of people follow those pages. So I still work on those pages. And a lot of the content I put there are like throwbacks or I add content from beyond the return. So let me move on to beyond the return now. Beyond the return is the follow-up, which happened because people after year of return kept asking things during year of return. So what's what's next? What's going on? Are you guys going to do this again? Um, you know, we've come and visit. Now what? So there are seven pillars for beyond the return, which are the foundation. And the overall theme is a decade of African Renaissance. So it's an entire decade of beyond the return a decade of African Renaissance. The seven pillars of Beyond the Return are experience Ghana, celebrate Ghana, brand Ghana, give back Ghana, um, diaspora pathways to Ghana, promote Pan-African heritage and innovation, and invest in Ghana. So those seven pillars are the foundation of Beyond the Return. Now, all of the events that are on our event calendar that are officially endorsed, each one of them has to align with one of the pillars at least. So they each event, all event organizers have submitted a formal proposal to the office and in their formal proposal to the office, they have to state how their event aligns with one of these pillars. So for example, he mentioned Afrochella. Afrochella, aligns with the Experience Ghana Pillar. So the Experience Ghana Pillar is all about experiencing the country through tourism, through events, um, you know, those things that people know about the events, the concerts, activities, that's Experience Ghana. The, uh, so he's on the web, showing you the website now. So the Invest in Ghana is about investments in the country. So there are events that we've had throughout the year where there's like conferences that people can go to and have discussions about, um, you know, investing in the country, learn about opportunities. So Invest in Ghana is a big pillar. Diaspora Pathways to Ghana is one of the pillars. That one is all about connecting the diaspora and finding ways for the diaspora to um, get residency, to move to the country for citizenship. And that's where that, um, that Homeland Return Act, that's what it's called. That's where the Homeland Return Act falls under that they're working on to get it passed to make citizenship faster. Celebrate Ghana is the pillar that focuses on um, more of the traditional stuff. So tends to look at things that tie into the culture of Ghana. Um, I know that and Afrochella falls under line, in line with that as well, because they also talk about celebrating African culture. So with Celebrate Ghana, it also includes traditional festivals because we had a lot of people who would ask about, well, what about some of the cultural things that happen in Ghana? And so we also endorse events that are related to the culture and traditional heritage of Ghana. So for example, last year we endorsed the Damba Festival, which is in Tamale in Ghana's Northern region and is a very cultural and traditional festival celebrating the chiefs in that region. Um, and then there's Brand Ghana, which is about branding the country. Just like when someone's going to, if you think about Paris, you think about Eiffel Tower. If you think about London, they think about, you know, the Big Ben, the clock. You think about uh, New York, they think about the Statue of Liberty. So it's like branding Ghana in a way that people think about something specific when they think about Ghana. So that's working towards branding the country. Give Back Ghana is about finding ways to give back to the community events and activities that we do to partner with 
organizations or partner with people in the diaspora who want to do things. So for example, um, Fuse ODG and Shaka Bars um, partnered with us in, um, in 2019 and in 2020, there was, a, um, there was a school that they were working on in the Akosombo area. And we went, we helped them with painting the school and, and you know, giving some books to kids. Um, then there was an organization, um, the D9 um, out of the US, they have um, their fraternities who came together to um, do boreholes for the community. Um, they've done, I think, over 50 boreholes across Ghana. So that was Give Back Ghana. And then there's Promote African Heritage and Innovation, which is all about promoting uh, Pan-Africanism and also the history um, and heritage. So learning about some of the historical sites that people don't often talk about. So um, people always know Cape Coast um, and the dungeons there and Elmina dungeons there. But this is also about promoting other places in the country, like in the northern region. There's uh, upper east region. There's like the Picoro, um slave camp where people were captured there at a point um, in history as well. Um, there's other places in the country that people can go and see. So it's about promoting history and heritage in other places as well. Um, I think that's it. I think I went, did I go through all of them? Yeah. That was it. You went through all yeah. of them. Yeah. So that is, so that, those are the seven pillars of Beyond the Return. So if you have an event and you want to submit your event idea and you email our office to submit your idea, you have to have it aligned with one of those pillars. Um, also, you have to prove that you're, you, you're in a, a legitimate, um, event organizer, because the, what we found is people would submit ideas and then they don't really even have a proper business idea. They don't know how to put it together. So in filling out the information, you have to prove that you actually can put on this event, right? Because if we're partnering with you, it's our name is at stake to partner with somebody. And if it flops, it, it looks bad on us as well. So yeah, I hope that answers the question. Very thorough answer. Absolutely. Um, so iTuber12 says, good morning, America. Did a, had a whole episode on Ghana recently. I wonder if the Black Panther release helped to boost the interest in Year of Return. Perhaps part two will boost Beyond the Return as well. Maybe. I don't know. Um, perhaps. I know that the Good Morning America segment was largely because the um, Global Citizen Festival happened in Ghana, in Accra. The Global Citizen Festival happened concurrently <clears throat> on the same day in New York City and in Accra. The, sh the show in Accra featured Usher as the headliner. And with that happening at the same time, that's why Good Morning America came to Ghana at the time they did. They covered the um, Global Citizen Festival. And then they also stayed for an extra week, I believe it was, to cover um, things in Ghana. They even went to my office. I wasn't there, unfortunately. Um, but they even went to my office and did the uh, the bus tour and stuff. So it's it's pretty cool seeing Ghana get on the um, the global stage like that. And I do think that Black Panther will, you know, push a little bit more interest in the continent, um, not only for Ghana, but for the entire continent's um, potential for tourism. Agreed. All right, cool. Um, Sharon Gooding says, hello, everyone. Anthony says, if, if an event would have changed or is postponed, will it be updated on the website? Yeah, it would be updated. I'm the one that uh, I I don't update the website. Well, the website we don't have. I don't think we have the events posted on the website yet, but they're posted on our social media pages. And if something changes or postpones, yeah, I typically update it as long as the event organizer has informed me that they're making changes to it. If they don't tell me, then I can't possibly make a change without being informed. But um, I've already started posting events on the Beyond the Return and Year of Return pages. I've created some Facebook event pages so that people are aware of what's coming up so that people can start planning ahead for events they may want to attend. Nice. And I just posted in the chat, um, beyondthereturngh.com. That's the website that I was just showing mm -hmm. um, that is being referred to by uh, Ivy and Anthony here. Okay, cool. Um, and Kofi says, this is so educative. Good job, guys. Well, I'm happy that you found it as such because that is the goal. So good. Um, okay, cool. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is a good question. iTuber saying, may I ask, what is the organization behind this? Is it, the, is it a Ghanaian company owned by who or a government initiative through a Ghanaian ministry? I know the answer, but please. The year of return um, and subsequently beyond the return is an initiative that is uh, under Ghana Tourism Authority, which is under the Ministry of Tourism, Arts and Culture. So it is essentially an initiative that is done by the Ghana government um, and operating 
yeah, it's all, and a brand operating under the gun of government. So it is a government initiative. Um, that's the simple answer. It's not a private company. Um, it's not a, yeah, it's not a private company. It's not a nonprofit organization. It is a government initiative. Which I think is great. I think more governments need to focus on things like this, right? I mean, taking a proactive approach to bringing people in. I love this, the seven pillars. I thought that that was really huge. And you see the images of the people who came and, you know, it's interesting. Like, you know, when I first came to Ghana, I, I went to, um, the Kwame and Chroma Museum, right? And when I went, I learned about how, as the first president of Ghana, he did a great job of bringing um, the influencers of the time, very different from our influencers now, but influencers of the time, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Maya Angelou to Ghana and um, them sharing their experiences and learning about Ghana. And I and it's interesting to see it kind of come full circle with like some of the folks who are those kinds of sort of influencers today. Uh, you mentioned you guys did some stuff with Shaka Bars, Steve Harvey, people who have voices um, in the diaspora that have come. Um, I think more countries on the continent of Africa need to do that. I'm speaking specifically to my country. Um, you know, we need more of that. Um, you know, we have we have Idris Alba, but that's it. Um, and so we need we need more of it. In and Syria. we have him too, because he's half and half. half. He's half Ghanaian. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and nobody ever knows he's half Sierra Leonean. Um, but yeah, he is half Sierra Leonean as well. So um, you know, he's obviously more people know that he's Ghanaian than he is Sierra Leonean, but yeah, but I mean, there's so many people who aren't even Ghanaian, like Jadena was, um, was there. He's obviously Nigerian and he's yeah. a proud Nigerian. Um, and a few other folks who are black Americans who had come. Um, I remember the first time I saw, I think it was, yeah, it was, it was that picture that you saw on the site. There was Anthony Anderson, Michael Jai White, yeah. um, Steve Harvey was there. Um, all those folks. And I think that, that that's, I mean, obviously that's, it's impactful, right? It gets people to understand like, um, like a lot of people are going there for something, even if you don't know what it is, right? It's yeah. drawing attention to it. Um, anyway, yeah. So I thought that that was, that's really cool. Okay, cool. So um, yeah, I think iTuber says that's great. God is killing it with PR right now. Sierra Leone, take note. Uh, hopefully the CD levels out. There's a couple things there. Yes, as a, Sierra Leone needs to take note. We're working on it. We're working on it. There's, a, there's to... a comment that I want to address from Dan Diablo. Okay. Do you want to do the the one about the Lanza yeah. 75? Okay, yeah. let's put that up. Yes. So, um, okay. so Dan Diablo says, uh, uh, Lancia 75 has accused you of being biased due to your position at year return. Speak on that, please. I don't know um, if she's talking about me on her channel. I have no idea. I've not watched her content in like, since 2020, I haven't watched her content, so I don't know um, what what specifically she's saying. But uh, I I mean, what is my bias? Because I did say I don't know if you were on the live before, um, uh, if you came from the beginning or if you jumped in in the middle. I'm not sure, but I did say that I had already been posting about Ghana. I had already been promoting Ghana before I started working at Year of Return, before I started working for Ghana Tourism Authority, I've already been promoting the country. I did, I remember one of my biggest videos I did before I started working there in 2018, I had, I think I had seven um, negatives of living in Ghana and seven positives of living in Ghana. Um, one of the things that I pride myself in doing is on my channel is yes, I do some positive stuff, but I also present the other side as well. Um, people talk about people glamorizing or glorifying Ghana and stuff. And I think, I think there's nothing wrong with somebody deciding to choose to glorify the country or to be positive about the country. People are positive about the United States of America for decades, even though the United States has a lot of negative things about it. And nobody says, oh, why aren't you saying this bad stuff that's happening in America? So, for example... Um, and I mean, I read the comments on our pages all the time. There was somebody, you know, somebody who commented some time ago about like literally um, so a whole negative thing um, about Ghana after somebody had after somebody had said something positive. And it's like, OK, so if I was promoting New York, I would be promoting all of the great things like they'll be saying the skyscape scrapers that, you know, the the this and that and go here and go there and try this and try that. I'm not talking about the nasty garbage that I smelled walking around the corner in Brooklyn, the broken fire hydrant that is spraying all over my face as kids are That's playing. Serious. I'm not talking about those things. If, if I'm promoting New York, I'm talking about all the positive stuff because that's that's what they do. They America promotes its positive stuff through movies, through commercials, through magazines. 
And so when an African country does that, they get accused of, oh, why aren't you saying this? Oh, why aren't you saying that? I don't think there's anything wrong if somebody chooses to show the positive because Western media has spent a century showing the negative. They've spent over a hundred years or plus showing the negative. And if someone decides to show the positive for five years, they get accused of, of being biased. I just think it's so interesting. Um, but, you know, like I said, I have a journalistic um, mindset and I do tend to show, you know, about both sides of things. Um, maybe I'm not doing it the way that that person wants it, but that's not my personality to do, to, to slam things in a certain way. For example, with my health issue that I had, and I talked about in my video, I talked about the challenges in Ghana. I talked yeah. about that. Um, but, I, but I'll also talk about the positive. I'll say, if you have the money, you can get the best health care. If you don't have the money, you don't, or you, you have to, you'll spend all your money trying to get good health care or, you know, like I'll talk about those things. Right. Um, so if she's talking about me on her channel, I'm not aware recently because I haven't watched her channel in a, in a very long time. I hope that answers. Well said. I got nothing else to add there. <laughs> um, Anja Africa says, good Greetings, sis. Ivy, good to see you. Thank you. Greetings to you as well. Um, and then Kofi just had something to add about uh, your return and the activities. Uh, beyond the return, sorry. Um, if I may add, I think it is a government initiative supported primarily by private enterprises and businesses. Is that the way you see it as well, Ivy? Um, it is a government initiative. Um, and there are some, uh, the, the, the businesses that we endorse and partner, their events, they're, they're like, private businesses and organizations that approach us to submit their event and then we review it. And, and so, yeah, so it is a combination, but the actual initiative itself is a government initiative. So we do partner with some people, endorse their events and programs. Yeah. There it is. Um, Molly says, are the events going to be in a, uh, be Accra based or other parts of Ghana also? Good question. So, so here's the thing. Um, one of the things that we always get feedback on is a lot of people saying that there's too many things that happen in Accra and not enough in the rest of the country. Um, but as I mentioned in the beginning, event organizers are the ones who submit their event ideas to us. And then we review it, uh, review it before it gets officially endorsed. Um, the, so somebody can submit uh, something and they decide they want to do an Accra. We can't force somebody to say, oh, you want, oh, oh, you're doing uh, your festival. Okay, no, don't do it where you chose to do it, do it somewhere else. So what we, but what we do is we encourage you. So when we put the call out that you can submit your event idea, I'm the one that wrote the press release for that. And I actually wrote in there that we encourage people to um, submit event ideas that are also outside of Accra. If you're in another part of the country, Submit your idea. If you have the capacity to do the event, submit your idea. A lot of people will say, I want to do this, I want to do that. And then they don't do it in the end. So, um, and one of the other challenges is if you're an event organizer, you understand the logistical challenges that exist in Ghana. And one of the reasons that people choose to do events in greater Accra is because of logistics. So for example, let's, let's, let's speak about Afrochella. They usually get 15,000 to 20,000 people coming to their event, right? If you have 15,000 to 20,000 people coming to your event, those people are also going to stay in hotels and Airbnbs, right? Who has a lot of hotels and Airbnbs? Accra. Who has the places that they'll be able to easily go to restaurants and patronize to match up with the numbers of people? Accra. Um, now, I'm not saying this in a, in a negative way towards the rest of the country. What I'm saying is, if you're an event organizer, your mind is thinking, what, where can I do it that will support the people who will come? So if you do an event and it's like in, uh, let's say you choose to do it in Sunyani, you would have to think to yourself, okay, are there enough hotels in Sunyani that can support the number of people that will come to my event? Are there enough restaurants? Is there a, uh, a you know bus schedule that I can give to people if people aren't driving that they can take to go to Sunyani to go to these events? So those are all logistical things that people consider when they talk about doing events. And I do still encourage people, if you have ideas in other places, do those ideas. Just think about all the logistics 
of how you want to do it. Maybe you may have to decide to do an event that's a medium sized event or a smaller sized event so that you can support um, a smaller number of people to still come and experience it in another part of the country. Tomorrow is starting the, Kum the um, Kumasi um, Carnival. There's a carnival starting. So tomorrow from the 25th to the 30th is the Kumasi Carnival. And um, so the Saturday is the actual day of the um, parade. And uh, so if you're going to be in Kumasi Saturday, go and enjoy the Kumasi Carnival. It's a mixture of, so the Ghana Caribbean Association, the Caribbean uh, Chamber of Commerce have come together with the Ministry of Tourism, Ghana Tourism Authority to do the carnival. We did it in 2019, but they had a break the last couple of years because of um, COVID. But this year they decided to bring back the carnival. So there's going to be that carnival happening um, this weekend. So if you're in Accra, go to the carnival. We've endorsed it. I've been, I've posted it on our page. Um, and so go and check it out. We also have um, had events in other parts of the country as well. I remember last year we had some festivals that were in the North and in the Upper East region. Um, this year, there's also a festival. The River Festival is happening in Ada. Um, so there are a few things here and there that are happening in other areas. Um, it's just a matter of are people going to go? And there's events in uh, in Aburi. There's also an event happening in Aburi. So it's all a matter of um, if you want to go to those regions uh, or if you want to do events in those regions. So, I mean, we want people to go to other parts of the country. Um, they may not necessarily do it in December. They may do it at other times of year because sometimes other parts of the country are also better in other parts of this um, the year too. It depends on what their person's needs are. There you go. All right, great answer. Um, Anja Africa says, many people see, oh, this is going back to uh, Idris Alba. We're pissed that he had dual citizenship. I think, look, and I, I know that he got his citizenship in an unconventional, unconventional manner. Um, those of us who've gotten our citizenship in Sierra Leone, whether you're like me, whose parents are both born there and you had to go through a process, or if you are a descendant and you did the dual citizenship through what now I'm finding out is about $5,000 process. Um, some people have, um, they don't like that certain celebrities get to fast track it and get handed the, um, but I mean, at the end of the day, this helps to bring other people back. Yeah. And so, you know, I think it's important that, um, that they do these kinds of things um, because, you know, he's a very popular person, right? I mean, he's been, I've, I've known of him since The Wire, right? And so right. I had no idea he was Sierra Leonean until 2019, 2018. When he, when he came in 2018 and he was a DJ at a party at the hotel I was staying at. So <laughs> I, I had no idea he was Sierra Leonean, but that's important to know. It's, it's great for country pride. And so the fact that they, they did the pomp and circumstance and gave him his, his uh, citizenship, whether he's also Ghanaian or whatever else, and he got, you know, fast tracked, I think it's still helpful for those who have country pride, you know, I wear my my uh, my beads that have my Sierra Leone colors on it. So yeah, I mean, um, I think it was important and I'm not mad at it. Um, and I think we should all be happy that he actually is embracing his Sierra Leonean roots finally, um, because it's not something that we see too many, too often by other folks, so. Yeah, cool. yeah. I do agree that, uh, you know, the celebrity aspect, governments know that it's good PR, you know, at the end of the day, it's good PR. And um, I remember there were times when um, the year of return would get criticized um, by some of the local Ghanaian community that why is it always about celebrities? Why do you guys always talk about celebrities? And some people actually even thought that Ghana tourism paid celebrities to come and flew them in, but the government never paid any celebrity to come to Ghana. They never paid any celebrities flight to come to Ghana. Those celebrities chose to come to Ghana on their own they paid their own flights to come to Ghana. You know, um, basically the, what, what we would do is we would help them with things like logistics, like, you know, helping with coordinating their, their trip as far as, you know, where we were going and stuff like that. But they didn't pay for them to come. You know, people think that. But one of the things that is important to understand is the power of celebrity. And that's why companies hire celebrities. That's why, you know, Coca-Cola sales drop significantly when, um, what's his name, Cristiano Ronaldo said he wants water instead of Coke. And then their right. sales drop because the power of a celebrity voice. So people know that if you align your brand with a celebrity, that it boosts it, it boosts this reach, you know, like 
had I not filmed that video of Steve Harvey and posted it on the year of return page, it would not have pushed the, the campaign as quickly at that period of time. Right. And it's because of celebrity, the celebrity push, you know, people love their celebrities, whether they hate them or whether they love them, they bring the media, they bring eyes. I remember, you know, one time when I posted something, I remember I posted something that was meaningful on one of our pages and I was like, oh my gosh, it's like been a few hours and it's only got like 20 likes or something. And then I was like, watch, I'll post a celebrity post and it'll get traction. And then I posted a, a, a post of um, Akon because he said he was thinking about coming to Ghana and it just, whew, like within like 20 minutes, it had so many likes and so many shares because people like celebrities at the end of yep. the day, you know? So, um, so yeah, I'm sure that Idris helped to bring more traction to Sierra Leone. 100%. And if you weren't there at that party, you missed out because that was great. Um, okay. <laughs> Molly said, hit the, the like button. This is great stuff. Thank you. It is. It is. Um, so, okay. So Anthony is saying that it seems like Chance the Rapper has gotten the Ghana bug. He's always in Ghana and he has an event coming up in January that a couple of folks have reminded me about. Yes, he does. Uh, do you yeah, so, yeah. So in, um, 20, 21, uh, he, uh, so his friend, uh, Vic Mensa, um, who is, um, his dad is Ghanaian. Vic Mensa, um, had reached out to me, um, when Chance was trying to come to Ghana. And, um, so I helped to facilitate some things, um, with him coming to Ghana with his team. And it, this was after he tweeted, um, that he wished he was in Accra. And that just like went viral that, Chance the Rapper wishes he's, he's in Accra. And so when he came, um, that was January of this year. January 2022 was when he made it. Um, and he loved it. He loved it so much that he's come back to Ghana. And he's he came back in July, I believe it was. And then he came back again in September for the uh, Global Citizen Festival. And then he's going to be coming back again for um, their festival happening in January. He may come a little bit earlier, but I know that definitely in January he'll be back in Ghana. And he's working with some artists. He's done some stuff with some artists as well. So there's some collaborations that are happening. And so it's been really great um, seeing how his journey has been in Ghana and how much he's um, he's loved by people in Ghana. And I swear, when I look at his face, I'm always like, he actually looks like a Ghanaian guy. Like his facial features, <laughs> he actually looks like a Ghanaian man. <laughs> So it's like uh, that DNA, you must have some of that DNA, whether it's Ghanaian or Nigerian, because Ghanaian and Nigerians have some similar features sometimes. So mm -hmm. who knows? True story. Um, all right, cool. So um, there's some conversations about the previous topic that came from uh, Dan Diablo. We'll skip those. Um, okay, Molly says this. Um, Ghana needs to look into health tourism. Oh, I agree that the health health industry def definitely needs to be uh, needs more investment. I I definitely agree with that. That there needs to be more investment in the health industry, more improvements in the infrastructure and stuff. Um, right now, it's like if you there's like some top tier places, um, but then there's a lot of places that are not adequate, in my opinion. Got it. Do you do you want to address this other one here? Which the other next one? one? Uh, Dan Diablo saying specifically the back and forth of, of concerning Asebu. I don't know. I'm not sure. Let me see. I don't. I didn't see it. I didn't see it, so I don't know. This is Dan Diablo saying because I don't know about this. I have no idea about any of this. I'm. Oh, I am, Asebu land. Yes. I don't know what back and forth. She. I know that there was a comment that I had made. I mean, I don't. I think there was a comment that I had made on her page or something, and we had like a, an exchange, a couple of exchanges or something, like two years ago. But I don't even remember what was what was said in 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 those um that back i'd have to go back and see because that was like two years ago okay. um yeah that was like two years ago i just know that we disagreed because she felt that it was a scam and i was saying that it wasn't and all oh, the land yes yes she was saying it was a scam and i was saying that it wasn't because i had actually gone there um and uh, seen it for myself um one of the challenges is one of the challenges is that you have people, so in Ghana, we and I mean, this isn't just Ghana only, but the elderly community has a habit of not reading their emails or not. Like my mom, we made an email for my mom. Does she ever check it? No, she doesn't. So we have a challenge where um, 
and I'm speaking the, I'm speaking from my experience going there. This is not speaking for Ghana tourism. This is not speaking for Beyond the Return. This is not speaking for the ministry. This is speaking as Ivy Prosper, who went to the land. Um, that the people who are um, checking the emails and stuff that are coming from abroad are not on top of things. Like the guy opens the email and there's like 100 emails and he's like overwhelmed. So I think that that's one of the problems that I suggested to them. I haven't followed up on it recently, but I had suggested to them they should get a young person to join their team and be the person checking their emails and stuff because you can't have emails pile up and not respond to people because people abroad will not look favorably on you if you're not giving some kind of acknowledgement. You know, I know a couple of people, um, Eko Simpson, I think Eko Simpson, he has a YouTube channel. He's the best person to speak about this land because he lives in Cape Coast and he goes and checks on the land on a regular basis. He's done a few follow-up videos there. Um, he is the best person to talk about that land. Fair. Okay. So I'm going to pull up another comment. I do have to take a quick break. <laughs> um, and, I want, and I want to give something else for Ivy to speak to really quickly here. Um, you know what? Actually, I wanted to ask you about this because this comes up a lot and people ask about this all the time. The gentrification happening by all of the Westerners coming and pricing people locally out. And people ask me this question all the time. And I have the same response that I have about my neighborhood in Brooklyn as I do in Accra. But can you speak to, I know this was one of, the, one of the questions that I had, but I wanted to ask you that. Can you speak to how, what you've seen with this? And um, do you think it's a net positive or a negative um, in, for, in terms of the country's growth overall? Because I think it'd be really interesting to hear people's- Do I uh, think, repeat that again? The gentrification happening- Oh, gentrification. Westerners. Do I think it's a positive or a negative? Yeah. Um, so the gentrification, so am I talking about this while you go your, do your bathroom break? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So the uh, gentrification. So this is something that uh, was in a video. Actually, Vanessa Canby talked about this in one of her videos with um, with a friend of mine, Fred. And uh, the whole idea of all these new properties that are being built in Ghana and it's driving the cost of um, living up for some of the local community because there's um, apartments, there's houses, there's all kinds of new developments, gated communities and all that that are popping up around um, mostly in the greater Accra area, but you're seeing some seeing more of that in also in places like Kumasi um, and uh, Ada, Cape Coast, like there's other areas where there's some development happening, Winaba and people are finding, they, fee, they feel that it's like re-gentrification and you find that sometimes when developers decide to build somewhere, the people who were there all get pushed out so that they can excavate and, and build on the land. This is not something new um, to, to the world. It happens not only in Ghana, but it happens in other parts of the world as well. Like I've seen that, like even for me, the time I've spent being back in Canada, that I've seen a lot of areas that have changed because developers have bought out the, the properties and tore things down and rebuild. So you're finding the cost of places are being are much more expensive than before. So I do think it's a challenge. And I think that there needs to be something done to help um, curb that a little bit, because there are a lot of people who are struggling to even get a place. So you're finding people are staying with family members for an extended period of time. Because what's happening is the diaspora coming in are coming in with their dollars and pounds and euros. And so these property developments are catering to those people but then you have local people who are not earning in that currency. And so it makes it difficult for them if they want to buy or build. So it's forcing them to go outside of some of the um, city center and go out into the outskirts if they want to be able to get land. So I do think it has a little bit of an effect. I think there's two sides to it. The side where it's regentrifying re the area. Then there's a side where the development helps to boost potential investment opportunities for businesses, which means that also potential for jobs, yeah. depending on the kind of businesses that are coming in. Um, but I do think there needs to be a balance. And that's where I like where um, people like um, uh, Kofi Anku, who has been working on some property in um, parts of the eastern region, uh, no, greater Accra, I think eastern region and greater Accra, um, working yeah. on properties that have some lower income um 
uh, the housing is a little bit less expensive. That he's he has properties that are going for like fifty thousand, sixty thousand, um, versus in Accra where it's like minimum like you're finding like two hundred thousand, three hundred thousand, which is a little bit uh, much for a lot of the local community. But it is something to be concerned with, definitely. Nice. Um, okay, so there's a lot of questions. Um, so I just want to get to some of them. Molly had an interesting question. I want to get your thoughts on this. So the year of return in their opinion, was heavily focused on African-Americans. What about other diaspora, Europe, South America, et cetera? So the year of return was, um, wait, because, because it hinged on the 400 year anniversary of the first documented ship to arrive in the United States, um, that is why initially the, um, the community that were um, coming were the African-American community. But the year of return essentially was a welcome to the entire diaspora. And because of it being um, hinged on that whole con the whole idea of the, the history of the transatlantic slave trade, the people who gravitated towards it more were people from the Americas. That's not just the United States. When I say the Americas, I mean North and South America. Right. People always think of the transatlantic slave trade, and I think it's only the United States, but Canada and the Caribbean and South America, there were people who came from those places as well. Like one of the things, one of my most memorable moments during the year of return was when people from Suriname came to Ghana. And I was like, my God, there was like two different flights that had groups of people from Suriname who came. Um, that's uh, for those who don't know, it's in South America who have lineage, you know, to Ghana. And so yeah, so it tended to hinge on that because the transatlantic slave trade went to the Americas, right? North and South America. Um, and, uh, but it was open to any diaspora. And so we did have a lot of people from the diaspora who responded. Uh, a lot of people came from, from the Netherlands. People came from, the, especially, especially the UK. Right. Um, and also um, there were some people from Australia and from Japan. Um, I met a couple of people from China who came, like uh, Ghanaians who live in China. So the difference with it, the dynamic is that you have a dynamic that in North America, there's a large number of people who are direct descendants of the transatlantic slave trade. And then you have in Europe, you have a lot of people who chose to immigrate to those places. They chose to immigrate to um, Africans who've chosen to immigrate to other countries. Um, so the dynamic is a little bit different, but the welcome was still there for people to come. And people definitely did. People definitely did um, come. And, and Ghanaians, what we found, this is an interesting thing. <laughs> the Ghanaians who had left Ghana, some of them been like, I left Ghana. I washed my hands of that country. I didn't mm -hmm. want to come back. Never again. They were proud Americans, proud wherever it was, they'd become citizens. And suddenly when they saw people coming to Ghana, they were like, oh, I'm Ghanaian, I'm Ghanaian. Oh, I'm Ghanaian, I wanna come back, I wanna come back. Oh, yeah. I haven't been back to Ghana in 20 years. Oh, I wanna come back. One person, I hadn't been back in Ghana in 35 years and I see this happening. Wow, I feel pride, I wanna go back. So it also lit the fire yep. for Africans to say, wow, I need to take pride in my Africanness and also join and come back. So it ignited different communities for different reasons. So it was it, it was really good. At the end of the day, it united everyone together. Um, and uh, I, I one of my another one of my memorable moments during the year of return was when the NAACP. Um, for those who don't know, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People is the oldest organization um, in the U.S. that um, supports uh, the rights of Black people, Black uh, colored people. So Black people, they also support people from the Latin community, but their origins was because of what was happening um, to Black people in the United States, um, you know, post um post uh, uh, enslavement, the freedom and the uh, civil rights era, all that stuff. So. When they came, they had like over 250 people. They came to Ghana. There was a gala dinner we had. And that moment was like the global African family. Right. Well, after, they, after they had their speeches and all that stuff, and then we had our dinner, and then the DJ came on. When the DJ came on, and it was like 
people lined up on two sides and people dancing down the middle. Started off with some grandma, someone's grandma who's dancing and everybody, like everybody. It was like, there was, there was African-Americans, there was black people from the Caribbean, like Jamaicans. There was um, people from, uh, Oh, where was it from? Cur I think it's Curacao. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Um, in Suriname, of course, people from the UK, people from South Africa, from Nigeria, this whole group of different Black people from different places around the world. And everyone was dancing to the beat. Everyone was getting their groove. Everyone was like cheering on grandma in the middle, cheering on the little girl who comes dancing, and cheering on the next kid who comes. Like, it was like a whole family reunion. That moment was for me was like I had tears. I like I had tears. I was like, oh my god, this is so beautiful. This is so yeah. beautiful. So um, yeah, the coming together of the global African family. I love it. Love it. Okay, so we got a we got a question from Mariama Forbes, who I know from Sierra Leone. She lives in the UK now. She says, "How are you combating the overpriced events, and how are you ensuring?" She's going to Ghana this year. That's why she's saying. <laughs> and how are you ensuring the money is actually going into the community and not fed back into Western countries? It's a mouthful, but yeah. Okay, that question came from your Instagram page. Yeah, it came from Instagram. Yes. Um, the, how are you combating that? That how are you combating that? The, I the mean, prices, I guess. I guess the the question is really more about um, how do we ensure that the money is actually for these events is actually being fed into the communities locally or impacting Ghana as well, opposed to the diaspora and inter internationally, I guess is really what she's trying to get at. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, so when, when, when those kinds of questions come up, what I want to know is how are they expecting the money to go into the community? Are they expecting that someone is writing a check to say here, this is for the community uh, writing a check to say here, this is for this group. Is is that what they want? Is that what they're asking? Because the essence of it all is money is going into the community by virtue of them having something in Ghana. So, so for instance, if I decide to have an event um, and I'm charging a, let's say I'm charging a certain fee for the event, event organizers take into, take into consideration, they have to pay the cost of renting the venue they have to pay the cost of security. They have to pay the cost of staff. So staff members being paid are going to be local staff making money. So a local person making money at an event is getting money in their pocket, which they're going to then spend in the local community. So if someone's making, someone making like, I don't know, let's say someone makes $500 or something and they use that money, they go to the grocery store, they're paying at the grocery store. They go to the market. They're spending money at the market. That money's going to that market woman. They go into an Uber. Their money's going into that person who's the Uber driver. Their money's going to the taxi driver. Their money's going to wherever they if they go to a restaurant, whoever's in the restaurant working. So essentially the money is going into the community. So whenever people ask those questions, I always want to know, is it is it that they're saying they want a check to be written to a certain organization to prove money going into the country's economy? Because um, the majority of these events that are being done in Ghana, they have to have a local Ghana partner to be doing the event. Most of these events are, most of the events being done are not being done by foreigners. People think that everything is being done by foreigners. The majority of these events are being done by Ghanaians who are in Ghana, um, or whether they're Ghanaians who will go back and forth. Most of them are done by people here, people who already have businesses in Ghana and they're doing events because they want to maximize the opportunity of the December season being a busy season for them to be able to also put on events, hire people, hire performance performances and stuff like that. You know, essentially, I think, you know, Afro Nation is a is an organization that they're international because they travel around to different places, right. but they have a partner in Ghana who is their the Ghana contact that we work with um, when it comes to that particular event. So I always, I'm always, I'm just curious as to in what way that person wanted money to be showing that it's going back into the community. I'm not discrediting her question. I just always want to know in what capacity is it that people are asking that particular question because people being in the country they're going to spend money in the country which is going into people's pockets people have this misconception when the announcement was made of how much money went into ghana's economy i think it was like three billion dollars after a year of return 
people think all that money went into the pockets of the government, but right. the money that would have gone to the government would have been the tax. So if you went to a restaurant and you saw on your receipt, it shows the tourism levy tax, you know, the VAT tax, like those are the taxes that would go to the government because it's a tax. But the all the other money that went into the economy went into the pockets of people working. So it's like, that money was calculated based on the average number of money that each person spent, each tourist spent when they came to Ghana. And that information comes from when they fill out their um, their um, declaration cards when they're leaving the country, their immigration declaration cards. So it's an average, based on the average amount of money a person spends when they come into the country. And that money is spent on restaurants, on hotels, on, on transportation, you know, on on whatever it is they do, whether they're buying from hawkers on the street, they're going to the market, you're, they're getting their hair done, they're you know right. going to some salon, some spa, like all the money that they spend within the country is going into the economy. Well said. All right, cool. A um, couple of things. Um, people are singing your praises again. Christabella says, Ivy looking beautiful. I hope you're feeling better. I'm in Toronto too. So I felt you when you talked about the healthcare in Ghana only to come back here <laughs> facing more healthcare <laughs> challenges. I watched that video too, three weeks ago, I think or so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Krista. I appreciate that. Yeah, I am feeling better. I do have a couple of tests that I'm supposed to do, which has delayed me because I was supposed to go back this month, but I had to delay a little bit longer um, due to some... Uh, so there was a, a particular test that wasn't until a particular appointment that wasn't until March of next year. And now they got a cancellation and had to, and bumped me up. So I'm going to stay for that before I, I leave. So it's like, this is just nonsense. This wait, wait, wait. And it's just, uh, yeah, the system is crazy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yes. And I want to shout out, um, there was a sticker that, and I, now I'm lost the name and I didn't. So somebody said, somebody. A super uh, chat. Like, yeah. A super, super chat. chat. Yeah. Um, but I, I lost the name. It's not showing up here anymore, but I, I wanted to shout them out, but it's not showing up anymore. So. Oh yeah. There was a super chat here. It's gone. I it's don't know gone. where it went. <laughs> I don't know. YouTube just disappeared it. So, but we appreciate it. Whoever oh, I see it. It's Betty Hopkins. Betty Hopkins. There you go. Yes. Thank, thank you. you, Betty. Appreciate it. Um, okay. So, uh, let's see where we are. There are so many questions from the folks. I think my questions, I have more questions, but let me run through some of these since everyone is asking. Um, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Kwame is saying, hope you feel better. Um, thank you. I'm good. Much better. Anja says Accra traffic is many MIC NYC on steroids. And it's going to be worse <laughs> next month and in the two months coming. Uh, I already know it took me, it took me two hours to go what would normally take 15 minutes in 2019. So I'm preparing for it. Insane, um, insane. Yeah. And you know, in yeah. 2019, there was a, a situation where me and the camera guy got out of the car and walked because the amount of time sitting in the car would have, we would have been late going to where we yeah. were going. Yeah. <laughs> Same, me and my friends, we walked about a mile and a half because we were in gridlock traffic going to the beach to go to Afro Nation. So yes, it is true. So if you're coming, just be prepared for that. Uh, leave early, leave early. That's what I can say. Um, so I think this question was answered already. Mark was asking, do does Ghana have any activities coming out on in a bury in a bree? Um, coming for two weeks in December. I have got my hotel in a bree, but I love the weather in a bree. So yeah, you mentioned this already. There's there's actually something happening like next week, and then you mentioned that there are things happening outside. Next week is in Kumasi. Well, Mark. this week coming is Kumasi this week. Right. Um, in a bree, the one that I know for sure is um an event called Little Havana that is happening on the 26th of December. That's the one that I know for sure uh, off the top of my head. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so King Joseph has a question about African currency and I guess you mean all the different currencies across the continent, uh, specifically Ghana. I did, a, I did a live about this. Ghana has um, was considered the second worst performing currency in the world. Which was Not the first? Because, um, it, was, it was in Asia somewhere. It starts with an okay. M and I don't want to get it wrong. Okay. But it was, you know, out of the 200 and what is it, 206 countries, recognized countries in the world, Ghana was 205 only because of how far it dipped, not because it's actual um, power against the dollar, because there are other countries that do have a lower um, power against the dollar, but it has halved 
since I first moved to Ghana. I moved to Ghana, it was six CDs to every $1. It's now passing 12 CDs to every $1. So with that being said, uh, do you have any thoughts on this, Ivy? No, I am just frustrated <laughs> because it's dropping so much. It's yeah. really bad. It's really bad. It's, um, I yeah. mean, I'm not an economist, so I don't usually talk about currency valuation because I even have my challenges understanding the whole system. Right. I actually wanted to do a live stream with somebody about this and just kind of people I know who are in the economic, uh, in the industry of finance, but uh, getting someone who's willing to talk on camera is another, has been a challenge because I want an expert who can really right. speak to why it's happening. And from what, I, what some people are telling me, it has to do with um, since the, when the president announced the going back to IMF, that that's when things started to go downhill and um, debts, uh, debts by, from the country are things that people have been saying as well. But I'm no expert, but it's just really sad and disappointing how much it's going down. It's it'll be great for people coming in December. Like if you're coming from the states and you're coming with your dollar right now, from what I heard, one the last I heard, one dollar was worth fifteen Ghana cities a couple of days ago. I don't know what it is today. <sighs> yeah. yeah. So if you're coming from there, you're gonna be you're good. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna be like, <laughs> you know. But if you are a local, it's like it's rough. It's rough. It's rough. Um, so, yes. cause people buy a lot of stuff in us dollars. Like what, and, and what I mean is if you're a business person and you're buying product, um, you're often buying it, uh, internationally, uh, in the U S dollar. Um, so it makes it tough for a local business person. So some of them have raised their prices, but if you're coming with dollars already, it's still not going to affect you as much as a local person. There you go. Um, okay. Here's a question from Catherine. She says, how long does Beyond the Return last? I'm a pastor and college professor in the States who works with and social hosts Ghanaian foreign exchange students. I have yet to visit, but plan to come. It's a 10 year initiative. So up until 20, 2030, 2030. There it is. All right, cool. Um, oh, no, let's move on. Oh, this is this is saying the five thousand dollar process for getting your citizenship in Sierra Leone. I'm way behind. Uh, that's from like forty minutes ago, thirty minutes ago. Okay, um, let's wow. see. Um, let's see if we could catch up on some things here that make sense for this discussion. Okay, so Chance the Rapper's thing that he's doing with Vic Mensa in January, January sixth is Black Star Line Festival. I guess yeah. that's that's what's happening January sixth. I'll be there for that. You guys, want, if you guys aren't going to be there live, I will be um, getting some content there. So look forward to that. Um, Mark says, I've heard many celebrities are already in town. I don't know if what you've heard, Ivy, but is that the case? Um, probably. There, There's always celebrities coming to Ghana. I think Lupita Nyong'o was just there recently. Right. Um, she got a dress made by a Ghanaian designer, Dwaba Serwa. Um, and she's, she's worn it to an event. So I'm pretty sure she was in Ghana recently. I don't know exactly when, um, but, uh, as for who's there right now, I don't know, but there's always celebrities coming to Ghana, coming and going. Got it. Okay. Um, okay. Here's a question. So Betty had a question here. Um, a holiday question. Are tourist spots, Osu Castle, Dungeon, WB Du Bois, et cetera, shut down on New Year's Day? No. They're open. On uh, Osu Castle might be. Osu but Castle often isn't always open every day. But okay. the other ones should be open. Um, but the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial is closed. They're doing a complete overhaul at the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial. Um, and they said that it would be reopening in, I believe, March. Got it. Um, uh, da, 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 let's see. Okay, so that's where the super sticker was, by the way. I found it from Betty. Um, there was another one from someone else, too. There was another one, which now I've lost. Krista Can't Bella. See. Krista Bella sent one, too. So thank you, Krista. We appreciate you. Um, so Mariama says, I'm enjoying this. Looking forward to visiting Ghana and filming the experience. Um, Joe, please come to Ghana earlier so you can give me a tour. <laughs> I'm coming to Ghana on December 26th. 
I got to be in Sierra Leone. Why don't you go to Sierra Leone, then go to Ghana? Mariana. <laughs> so Mariama and I met in Sierra Leone in the, uh, sometime last year. Um, and so she's coming to Ghana. Uh, she's a content creator as well. Okay, so yeah, this is Christabella. We mentioned the other, um, hit that like button on both channels. Yes, please, like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you're doing that. If you find this interesting, definitely do that. Um, <laughs> Fred says, Ivy is not an economist. Still answer the question well, though. Um, okay. Uh, I'm just trying to scroll through here and see if there's any questions. See, this is where my reading comprehension challenges come into play. Because uh, I'm trying to read. Okay, here we go. P Black 3 says, great seeing you live, Queen Prosper. Oh, Queen Prosper. I like that. Can you address the COVID vaccine requirement for international travelers? I'm getting mixed feedback. Some are still paying 150 tests at airport. Um, there's not supposed to be a test at the airport unless you're, um, so basically Ghana is still, I don't, and I don't know if they're going to change this because people always ask me if Ghana's going to change this. I do not know. The only answer I have is that as of today, October 24th, 2022, if you're watching this live later, I want to say that date so people don't get it mixed. Um, that they are still requiring people are vaccinated before they come into Ghana. And if you are a Ghanaian citizen or a Ghanaian resident, they are allowed to return when they are not vaccinated, but they are the people who are required to do the test at the airport. Mm -hmm. So the people still paying would be people who are Ghanaians or Ghanaian residents, um, legal residents who are not vaccinated and pay to get tested and then put into possible quarantine based on their test results. Um, so yeah, if you are not Ghanaian, they are still requiring that you are vaccinated before you can enter the country. That's as of today, October 24th, 2022. If they change it later, I don't know if they're going to be changing it. Okay, um, there you go. Uh, Kwame asked a random question. I thought that was interesting. Do you have any children? <laughs> I don't know why. Who, me or you? I think it's she. It says, does she? Oh, I saw it says she. I just saw it says she. No, I don't. Uh, I don't have any children. Okay. Would love to, um, but I don't. So Greg says, Greg says, awesome professional channel. Dior should sponsor perfume by Ivy. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay, let's see. Uh, Thank you. Okay, some other some other stuff here. A, a powerful name, by the way. I, I've said this to you before, but I, I love and I love how you play it into things, right? Thank you. Know, you. Live long and prosper, right? All of that. I'm sure you heard that <laughs> your whole life. My last name being Hot Water. I've heard all kinds of things. Are you too, serious? So well, Hatagua, Hot Water, Hot Agua. Hot. Oh, oh, Agua. Oh, the Spanish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. California. So ever since my first ever. Spanish class, I've been hearing that. Um, hot water, or teachers would say, you're in hot water now, and it sounded really, as if it was the first time I heard it. Um, anyway, um, <laughs> let's see. Okay, I'm not gonna do, cause you know, YouTube is really big on the uh, speculations about the global sickness and et cetera. So I'm not yeah. gonna post any of those comments. I'll just leave that to you. You guys can read that and, dis and discuss amongst yourselves. Yeah. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. Um, okay, cool. So uh, here's another question from Ivy. I think I've, well, there were some comments. Let me see. I don't want to miss any comments because people were saying a bunch of stuff here. Um, uh, okay. Am I missing anything? There's somebody, um, uh, Mariama Forbes is asking a question about diaspora groups for solo travelers. Okay. Yes. That was the one. Yes. So do you want to, yeah, let's, let me click on that. Okay. Here we go. Yes. There we go. Okay, so there aren't any specific groups for solo travelers, um, but if you're looking for uh, a, a solo travel experience to be curated, I do have that service available. So you can always send me an email because um, I have partnered with um, Location Accra um, to help support with these kinds of tours because I do have a lot I have a lot of women who send me messages that they're solo travelers and they're looking for a, a curated tour experience in Ghana 
And so if that is what you're looking for, I can certainly support that. Um, just send me an email to info at ivyprosper.com and uh, we can start the dialogue there. We can do a discovery call and see what is um, what's possible. There is a, there. I mean, there is a fee if you're going to be if you actually decide that you want to book a um, curated tour, but we can do a, you know, a discovery call to have a conversation and see exactly what your your needs are. Cool. Yes. Um, and I'm just realizing that they, I lost audio on the Instagram live, but the, the link is pinned there and it looks like some of you joined because Mariama was there and a few others. So you guys are on the YouTube live anyway. So that's great. Um, okay, cool. Um, we're now an hour and almost 30 minutes in. And so I don't want to take up too much more of your time. I've, Ivy, you've always been generous with your time. So I appreciate it. Just have a couple more questions for you before we close this thing out. Um, you mentioned something that you enjoyed, um, but I want to ask you, what is one of your favorite experiences or things that you've done as part of the Beyond the Return activities in the last few years? Um, yeah, I did mention some of the high moments for me. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I always loved some of the, um, the cultural festivities. So there was the, um, the national, um, what was it called? NAC, uh, national cultural festival that happened in Kofordria. Mm -hmm. So you see, we have events in other regions, Kofordria in the Eastern region, we had an event and that one, because I'm half, my father's um, Ewe, my mom is Achim. So the Achims are part of the Akan people in the Eastern region. Um, the Ewe's are from the Volta region. And so I've always been uh, more exposed to the Eastern region side of my, of my family because my mom always talked about that stuff, whereas my dad didn't talk much about being Ewe as much growing up as she did. And so that festival was highlighting all 16 regions of Ghana. And so what I loved about it was seeing some of these performances. And one of the performances that really st stuck with me was when they had like dancing and stuff and just seeing it, hearing the music and just, I just felt this emotion in me. Um, but I loved that um, festival. I also like some of the business conferences that we have that um, give people an opportunity to actually have conversations and the networking stuff. So some of the networking stuff where people can actually talk to each other and actually engage and learn from each other. So one of my favorite events that we had during the year of return was the um, HAXA, the Heritage, uh, the Historical African Cultural Society. And they had this it was three or four day conference where each day there were different discussions, different speakers, different panelists. And um, there was a particular day that they had a panel that was African-Americans and Africans and having discussions of their, of their experiences. And I thought it was really cool because it was kind of like a coming together of them sharing some of their experiences they have, um, the way that society has almost trained us to not like each other or trained us to not know about each other and then just seeing them coming together and having those conversations was really great and then also the one of the panel discussions that i was like wow was um they were talking about the history of this man who um was an enslaved african and was eventually taken to virginia and how there was somebody who came from Virginia whose family was like a descendant of the people who took that particular person as an enslaved African over there. And on this panel, there was like five or six different men talking about their, their family history. And then one guy put, they put a picture on the screen behind him. And it was like a picture of his family from like years, probably like a hundred years ago, black and white picture. And then they both looked, people looked back and one guy was like, hey, that's my, one of my, my relatives. And in that moment, they saw that these two men who thought they were just two men on a panel discovered that they had the same relative. And it was like, wow, we are so connected and we don't even realize it. So for me, some of the great moments are those kinds of moments when the reality of how connected we are just is like in your face and you're like, 
you can't deny how connected we are as a people. It's like the root was on the continent and the branches have spread all over the place. And eventually yeah. people kind of connect and, and discover each other and find each other. Um, so those were some of the moments that, that were really memorable for me. And then December, 20, I think it was December 27th, that day was like back to back to back to back events. And it was yeah. like, morning go to the airport to greet some people mid-morning go somewhere else afternoon somewhere else evening somewhere else and it was just like boom 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 and it was like wow people really are loving being here like right. it just was like i thought to myself i grew up i was born in ghana but grew up in canada always knew i was african and Never did I feel such a strong sense of pride as I did in 2019 because of seeing how monumental it was that people were coming. And after the year was over, it was funny because we kept saying in the office, oh, I can't wait for this year to be over. We were so tired. We were so exhausted working day after day, morning to night, performers who wouldn't come on stage on time. So we would get home, get home to like four o'clock in the morning and then you got to okay. get up at six to do it all over again. Um, and then when it was over, um, it was like, we were part of history. We were a part of history, like history, you know, not knowing that we, that COVID was looming soon, right. you know? but right. it was like, it was amazing. It was, it was amazing that, that just overall, the whole experience was phenomenal for me. Phenomenal. Nice. Yeah, I, I can say I had an amazing experience in 2019. We hadn't known each other yet, but that that was what led to me eventually deciding to move to Ghana, which is a whole conversation for another time. You guys see all that content on my channel earlier uh, content. But yeah, um, I mean, you guys did a great job during that that four days I was there. It made such a lasting impact that I ended up moving to Ghana a year later, literally a year later. I was in Ghana. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was an amazing experience. All right, so what do we have? Um, there's a couple more comments and questions. I'm going to skip some of those because it's getting a little spicy. Um, okay, here's one. P Black is asking, and my computer is moving really slow. So it's coming up, but then it's not. Okay, there we go. Do any of your tours include the African Wall and Prom Prom with Baba Jerry Johnson? We actually um, went there with... Uh, uh, um... Angela Rye, when Angela, political analyst Angela Rye and um, Queen Efwa and their group came, we actually went there. We took them there on a tour. Um, so, so yeah, if people want to, then yeah, it's included. He has had some events um, at that at that space, and I have encouraged him to submit his event to our office so that it can be a, a partnership. Um, but so far, he hasn't um, submitted it to our office, but. Um, I certainly do think that his should be something that has more high profile to it. Um, and thank you for that question. So um, that's that's a reminder for me to send him a message again to remind him to send it to our office. All right, great. Um, all right, so again, we're at an hour and almost 40 minutes. So a couple well, more I can, I can, can I, um, um, yeah. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I want to just mention a few of the events that are coming up because yes, please. Yes. Um, people may be planning stuff and they may want to know, because we haven't, we haven't released the official calendar out um, as a, as a one, you know, two page document or whatever, but I have been posting events on our pages for on the year of return page, as well as on the beyond the return pages on Instagram and on Facebook um, and on our Twitter account too. I'm trying to build our Twitter account because for some reason it was suspended by Twitter for like, two years and I had to try to build it, trying to build it now. They finally opened it up. I don't know what the problem was, but anyway, so, um, so coming up in uh, November, there's an event called the Decor Sign Expo, which is actually an interior decorating event to trying to partner to promote the, you know, the creative arts side as well. So the Decor Sign Expo is happening at the, I think at the International Conference Center, Accra International Conference Center, and it's going to be promoting interior design, interior arts and creatives and stuff, furniture. Um, that is November 10th to 13th. Um, on the 20th, there's of November, Rhythms on the Runway. Rhythms on the Runway is um, a fashion event that's been happening for about 10 years in Ghana. They It's a mixture of fashion and music. So we'll have artists performing as well as they have um, fashion designers showcasing their work. 
There's the YouTube Creators Festival, which is happening on the 24th to the 26th of November. The YouTube Creators Festival will feature speakers, um, workshops um, to engage with people who are content creators in, in Ghana, West Africa. I know last year they had people who came from Nigeria as well, so they may have that again this year too. Um, there's a couple of food festivals happening um, that are happening in December. Uh, I know one of them is uh, the 2nd or 3rd of December. The other one is later in the month. I can't remember the date off the top of my head. There's a Jalof and Afrobeats festival happening, celebrating Jalof and Afrobeats. I think uh, our West African people need to come out to that and really need to be like, uh, which one is really the best one? Which Jalof mm -hmm. is really the best? <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, there's the Freedom Parade. The Freedom Parade is happening in um, Ada, and it is at the Nchim Chim Museum. That event is celebrating African culture. They're going to have a, pro a procession um, of people walking around and doing like that African face painting type of stuff as well. So, um, so yeah, that's one event happening in December. I'm trying to name things that are not necessarily well known because everybody already knows about Afrochella, Afro Nation. Right. Um, there is uh, a Made in Ghana fair that is going to be promoting um, all products made in Ghana. That's the 22nd to 25th. It's an opportunity for you to shop. There's a Festival of Lights happening the 23rd to the 25th. The Festival of Lights is going to be at Independent Square. It's going to be like those of you who live in countries like Canada and the US, I think the UK also, they like Christmas time, you have these festivals where there's like all these lights, Christmas lights and all that kind of stuff. Um, that's going to be what they're doing on the 23rd to 25th of December. Um, there's going to be a festival in Kumase from the 23rd to 27th. That's called the Kumase Weekend Festival. Um, I don't have details on it yet, but I know that it's, it's going to be happening in Kumase. Um, there is the Roverman Festival of Plays for people who like theater. Um, Ibo White is um, a playwright in Ghana who's very well known in Ghana for many years for his plays that he does at the National Theater. So every Christmas season, he has this festival of plays where there's like five to six plays that um, are going to be showing at the National Theater. So from the 24th of, Jan of December, up until January 2nd, there's going to be a few of their plays that are going to be showcased at the National Theatre. Um, there's uh, the Northern Fest, which is going to be happening in the Northern region. That is on the 30th of December. There is the there is one for young people. It's called the Teens Rave. That's going to be a festival for young people. So for if you have a teenager or something that wants to go out and do something, the Teens Rave is happening on December 29th. Um, I don't have the location yet, but once they send me the flyer, um, I'll post it on our page. Um, and there's also an event called the Royal Gala. That's going to be something that's regarding NFTs. So they're celebrating NFT art for people who are into NFT art. The Royal Gala is happening as well on the 30th of December. Um, and so that's just an example of a few things. I just wanted to name off a few things so people can know that there are quite a number of things coming up. Follow the Beyond the Return page on Instagram. I'll just put it in the um, section here, Beyond the Return. It's just, the same handle on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter, Beyond the Return. And you can follow the pages to get information on what's going on because um, I'm the one that's posting. So if you go to those pages and you make comments or you send a DM, you're sending a DM to me. <laughs> Um, just want to uh, let you know, you can always follow those pages to get more information on what's happening. So, yeah, I just, I just posted it in the chat there. And so that's the page she was re referencing, um, just now. Excellent. Okay, cool. So, um, I think we've, it's quite an exhaustive live. We've gone through everything. I know there are a lot of questions about other things, but this live is supposed to be about the beyond the return activities. Oh, but I mean, when you do live, you always end up going in other directions, right? Right. Especially my lives. Um, so for sure. Um, uh, so yeah, so uh, Kwame says, love the stream, Ivy and Authentic African. Well, thanks for joining. It's been Thank great. Thank you for joining, me. Kwame. Very educational for me. So I, I appreciate it. Um, and it looks like I got a new subscriber too. Kofi says they're not subscribed awesome. to my channel. Awesome. Shout out to you. Um, and on that note, make sure you subscribe. 70% of you who watch my videos don't subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. I do look at my analytics. All that the time. is so normal for all people on YouTube. That's a normal thing. Like most people watching don't subscribe. Yeah, I know. They're I know. channel hoppers. 
channel hoppers. We need to change that. Subscribe so that you guys know every time a new live is coming and you can get information like this, right? Um, I try to keep it away from the salacious and the gossip and all of that. And it really is about learning what it could be like to move in the activities that are happening. Um, and so we want to ensure that we're giving people that knowledge. And that's why I wanted to bring Ivy today, because obviously she's a wealth of knowledge, as you guys can see. Um, so this was really, really great. Uh, make sure you subscribe to her, subscribe to mine, um, like, comment um, in the replay. This is going to be reposted as a video. Make sure you comment in the replay. If you're joining now, go back and watch from the beginning. Lots of great information. Um, and yeah, cross pollinate. You guys who are uh, Ivy subscribers, subscribe to mine. My subscribers are probably already subscribed to Ivy, but if you're not, go subscribe to Ivy's channel as well. Um, but yeah, Ivy, I want to thank you very much for doing this. This was um, really, really helpful. Um, and I'm glad we got a chance to get you on to talk to the people. Any final words before we go? Final words? Just have a great time. If you decide to come to Ghana in December or any other time of year, uh, come, you know, come and enjoy yourself. And um, also know that, because I know that there's people who watch and maybe they may never get a chance to come. You know, don't worry if you can't come. You can always be a part of the community of learning and exchanging information because um, as people of African descent um, all over the world, whether you're a Black person in America or in Jamaica or in St. Kitts and Nevis or in Canada, um, Norway, wherever you are, wherever our people are, um, you're all part of the community in helping to change the narrative and helping to tell our stories because all too, um, it's been a long time that we didn't tell our stories and share our stories. And so much to the point that the National Geographic apologized for right. being a part right. of telling negative stories about Africa for so right. many decades. Right. And so we have to be in control and helping to share the story. So if you're never able to come to the continent and create your own content, take your own pictures, you can always share other people's content, um, be part of the conversation, ask questions if you don't know, because I don't fault anyone who doesn't know. I don't fault anyone who makes any ignorant comments because it's ignorant because they don't know, right? It's all about learning, um, teaching each other and, and sharing. So I appreciate all of you who have come onto this live. I appreciate you, um, Joe, for having me on the live today. It's been a great conversation and, uh, I look forward to more and, and connecting when we're both back in Ghana. I am looking forward to it as well. I, think I know because we were supposed to meet and it never happened before we both set out and it didn't happen. Yeah, we've both been gone forever. So yes, we de we definitely need to when we get back. Um, lots yeah. to catch up on. Um, well, yeah, so thanks again. Um, and oh, and do you want to just give your, it's Ivy Prosper on everything, right? And also yeah, Beyond the Return I'm on everything. Yeah, Ivy right? Prosper on everything. So you can follow me on, so I'll, it's just Ivy Prosper, Ivy Prosper on everything, on Instagram, on my, um, my public Facebook page, on um, Twitter, YouTube, and then my website is ivyprosper.com. And yeah, it's Ivy Prosper. All right. And for those of you who are Ivy subscribers, mine is authentic African. Instagram is authentic underscore African. It was taken on Instagram when I started the page back in 2019. Uh, but yeah, it's all there. So just follow authentic African. I also do post on my personal stuff, but not as much. So just follow authentic African because that's really where I spend my time and my focus. Um, but yeah, thanks again for watching, guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share this with anybody who's planning to come to December come to December, come to Ghana in December uh, so that they know what is available to them for the year of return. Um, so thanks again for watching guys. And we will see you all on the next video.